Okay guys, in today's video, with the recent Obsidian Entertainment video showcasing that Grand will now be available for all platforms including PS5 and Nintendo Switch, they have also shown us some things that might be coming in the 1.4 update. So today I'm going to be showing you guys what is confirmed and some of my opinions and ideas that I would love to see in Grounded 1.4 or even in the future of Grounded. So let's start off with the Nintendo Switch trailer. In this trailer it shows off Grounded coming to Nintendo Switch of course and also Willow is holding a new type of two-handed weapon which looks like to be a mini sort of sword which is a little bit odd considering we already have four different types of elemental weapons the sour battle axe the spicy coltana the mint mace and the salt morning star so what this could mean is that we can get all new types of elemental weapons inside of grounded or we're just getting a new mint sword which would be pretty cool and now one thing that caught my eye is watching the original trailer posted by obsidian entertainment and then the nintendo switch trailer in this scene here you can see willow in the obsidian trailer holding what is to be the fire ant queen scepter but in the nintendo switch trailer you can see willow holding the salt morning star which is a little bit odd, but I don't think it means anything too much. I still think the Fire Ant Queen is still coming into Ground in 1.4. And this can be supported further by the giant rock in the Fire Ant's nest. You can't break it, but with commands, you can break it open. And inside, you can see the what is supposed to be the Fire Ant Queen cave. But my gut doesn't feel like this is the right spot for the Fire Ant Queen. Obviously, it is in the nest, which makes sense. But there is also a different area that is fully fleshed out and has a cave and a what looks to be a boss area, which could possibly be the Fire Ant Queen's boss arena. And now looking back at the cut Fire Ant Queen footage and animations, thanks very much for Chillax24 for data mining this for everyone. And what could possibly happen when you summon her in, it looks like in the emerge phase, she bursts open some sort of dirt wall. So she could be possibly bursting herself in, revealing herself to the player. And it looks like in the rest of the footage that she is very stationary. Either she doesn't have animations of walking or she's intended to be a sitting stone boss, which can be supported by that she has a summoning screech attack that could summon in fire worker ants or fire soldier ants. We don't really know. And usually Ant Queens really don't attack people at all they just get their work ants to do it or soldier ants to do it for them to protect the queen which makes sense this could mean that the fire ant queen would burst in through one of these side walls here and then she will leave her abdomen not being able to be hit by the player as that is her weak spot and you're going to have to hit the fire ant queen to kill her somehow and the dirt pillar looks a little bit interesting considering it could block line of sight between you and the fire ant queen as she does her acid spray attack or something or it could just be an error from the devs who just left it here and i'm just here digging out something that doesn't exist and now coming back to the two-handed mint sword i I believe this is the weapon that you could be used to kill the fire ant queen as all fire ants in the game currently are weak to fresh damage and also the fire ant queen could be weak to slashing damage which could be an extra added bonus to the weapon and now i believe there could also be a new burgle chip here at the wheelbarrow with this bland field station this field station is in a very odd placement in my opinion it's just sitting here with a mega milk molar it is quite useless unless you're going for all the milk molars or you're trying to unlock all these survey scanners but i believe that a burgle chip could be placed here in the 1.4 update holding the either mint two-handed weapon or even the ability to make a two-handed weapon of any elemental type which would be very cool so after you do that and possibly kill the fire ant queen with it she will drop a bunch of parts and then you will be able to analyze those parts and unlock the recipes of her armor set and weapon which is called the strategist set which is a little bit of an odd name in my opinion i don't know what it would mean strategy as in like you're gonna have to strategize how to use it properly possibly i'm not too sure and a lot of people in the community think this set and weapon is going to be able to enhance and be able to summon your own fire ants to help you in my opinion i like the idea but i also think that the weapon could be used to make your own acidic puddle that lowers enemies defenses i guess we will have to wait and see now on the obsidian entertainment twitter or x page they went ahead and posted a post called hey you guys thank you for 20 million players it's a goonies reference i myself haven't seen the goonies i'm sorry i can't really debunk what happens here but what i can see is hoops is holding the widow dagger a little bit differently which looks kind of badass in my opinion instead of holding the blade straight up she's holding it as a dagger and the teens are sitting here it looks like very dark like a treasure hunt is happening because i just see treasure and doubloons also in the background you can see two firework ants, which could also hint towards the fire ant queen being in the game and it could be a treasure hunt to find the fifth missing kid considering there is a skull with a wizard hat and this world or well, this game is set as in a fantasy world with minotaurs and mazes so it could be a wizard hat interpreting a pirate hat to symbolize it's going to be pirate themed or something like that and we know there are only four playable teens in the game and when you spawn in the kid's case you can see there is an outline of a fifth kid but this has been in the game for almost three years or something like that ever since release so this could just be a coincidence i'm not too sure now let's go ahead and talk about the secret hidden door which was in 1.3 so this is going to be the door that somehow sets up 1.4 people have speculated that these like tv monitors are three of the story bosses four of the optional bosses which makes sense as we got the assistant manager the infected ladybug the mant and director schmecter as the somewhat main story bosses and then we have the hedge broodmother the mantis the wasp queen 
Queen and the infected Brubella as the optional bosses. Now, what can be behind this door? That is completely unknown. We have no idea, but there have been some good ideas. Some people have speculated it might be a teleporter to the grass box, considering that Granite has like a memory issue right now, so they can't really add much. But I've seen somewhere in the game files that this door is called like boss door or something like that. So it could be a boss fight into a teleporter. So it could be two and one. I would really hope that this is a revamped director Schmeck the boss fight, or possibly even a giant robotic orc enemy that we have to fight to be able to teleport or something like that. But I would love to see a revamped director Schmeck the boss fight because the director Schmeck the boss fight, in my opinion, was kind of lacking considering it's just the assistant manager boss fight. This time, instead of summoning in robots, he summons in orc spider juniors and then he has green lasers or something like that. Kind of underwhelming for this big bad boss that everyone was talking about. So if he comes in human form, that'd be pretty cool. If he's in a giant mech, that'd be even better. But just I'm hoping it's something to do with director Schmecter nonetheless. Now I'm going to go over and see one thing that I would like to see in 1.4 or the future of Grounded is a upper yard pond because we all know the regular pond in the lower yard has the pond super chip and the door that also unlocks the stump lab. And in my opinion, after you've unlocked the stump lab and finished the pond lab and got your muscle sprouts in that, the pond is literally useless. The only time you're going to come into the pond ever again is if you're farming for muscle sprouts and then now you can also farm muscle sprouts in your own garden patches. So there's really no point to coming down here unless you want the 30 extra muscle sprouts and the pond is a dangerous place. It has an unkillable koi fish that roams around that one shots you no matter what and it's pretty hard to escape. Yes, you can hit it and get free koi scales from it but would you really do that? So that's why I like to see these weapons and armor be implemented in the upper yard because once again it takes a long time to farm for these resources in my opinion and it's going to be used for like less than half an hour of gameplay and it's not really worth it and once again you don't even need to craft the entire underwater set to do the pond lab all you need is a guild tube and you're completely fine you can survive with like 10 seconds of oxygen left so there's no real point to even craft the underwater gear and don't even start with the sunken trident because that thing is complete garbage so what i think they can do with the upper yard pond it could be some sort of like underwater cave that you're going to need a tier 3 shovel to mine rocks to get into and once you're inside it can be some sort of a glow worm cave and if you kill those glow worms the glow worms could give you a armor set or a weapon similar to the giddy goop but instead of a trinket it's a full armor set that slows enemies down and highlights them or something like that i would think that would be really cool but what can i say i am just a player of the game i'm not a game dev i don't know how hard it is or easy it is to implement these things into the game it's just an idea and an idea goes a far way and if memory is a big issue they can't keep adding stuff into their yard just make it that we can kill the koi fish instead of making the koi fish invincible make it that we can kill the koi fish and get some tier 3 or even tier 4 gear for it which would be pretty cool i would love to kill the koi fish considering it just sits there and does nothing besides kill me and annoy me so an underwater boss would be cool nonetheless and that is going to bring it to the end of the 1.4 speculations what and what i would like to see in the game if you guys have any ideas or, or things that you agree on or disagree on chuck them down in the comments i like reading every single one of them and with that said make sure to leave a like and a subscribe if you made it this far and i'll catch you guys in the next video